I want to give you uh, the message uh, first, the theme, the title, uh, in the form of a scripture. So let's turn to Matthew 6, verse 10. Jesus taught us how to pray. Jesus taught us how to pray. And He said this, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be Thy name. Thy kingdom come. Wow, Thy means, I'm in uh, Old King James. Uh, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It is one kingdom, but in two places. Turn to your neighbor and say, one kingdom, two places. One kingdom, two places. So again, here we go. Agreement is the kingdom and the separation is two different places. Firstly, heaven. Secondly, earth. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Again, uh, hopefully I'm not sounding uh, 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 boring now because I'm repeating myself because it's very important. Two places. Heaven is not earth. Earth is not heaven. There are two separate places but your kingdom come. God wants His kingdom in heaven. He wants His kingdom on earth and He wants His kingdom on earth like it is in, come on, heaven. Alright. So I hope I nailed that because I want you to remember these are not Kenneth Chin's words. These are Jesus' words and He taught us how to pray. That means that His kingdom, can you imagine this? If Jesus taught us how to pray this, means His kingdom is not fully on the earth. You've got to accept that because if it's fully on the earth already, He doesn't need us to keep praying this daily. Daily. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Every day your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And then when Jesus came to the earth, he continued on this theme, right? About the kingdom. So, I, I, I don't know whether you will catch it, obviously, as I'm preaching, but I might as well give it to you. Uh, I want to and hope to convince us this morning, if we are not yet convinced, how important the kingdom of God or the, even the thought of the kingdom of God is in our lives. I call it sometimes the centrality of the kingdom. The centre, the focus, the middle right? The, the, the bull's eye. If you get your eyes on the kingdom and you live for the kingdom, in the kingdom, uh, and, and life is about the kingdom, uh, I'm telling you right now, you will prosper. Both on earth and in heaven, you will, come on, prosper. Okay? I want to bless you with this message because I have been blessed. The Lord spoke to me about kingdom, 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 the whole of 2021. And so some of the things I'm going to share with you, if not all of the things I'm going to share with you, has been downloaded from the Holy Spirit. So I pray you will bless you as it blessed me because it helps me focus. I want to help you focus. Turn to your neighbor and say, Pastor wants to help you focus. Okay, that's, that's the key. That's the reason why this message. I want to help you focus about what the plan is. Three Ps I give you very quickly. It's about the plan. Every time you talk about kingdom, plan. Somebody say plan. It's about purpose. Somebody say purpose. And it's about power. Every time you talk about kingdom, it's about plan, purpose, power. Let's look at some of the words that tell us Jesus did not just preach the gospel, He preached the kingdom. Okay? XCV, can you help me? Uh, there's a series of uh, scriptures there. Uh, let me give you the first one so you know what uh, is the next one. Matthew 4, 17. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. I look at what Jesus said, from that time meaning that the time uh, John the Baptist was put into prison, Jesus took it upon Himself to preach this. He did not just preach the good news, not just the way we know it. He did not just preach the gospel the way we think it. He preached the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven. Let, give me the next scripture, please. Found in Mark. Mark chapter 1 verse 15. <coughs> And saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Jesus is very focused. There is one reason why He came. He did not just come to die for our sins and to get us saved. He came to restore the kingdom and to restore sons and daughters of the kingdom. Okay? Luke 4, 42-43 please. Now when it was day, he departed and went into a deserted place and the crowd sought him 
and came to him and tried to keep him from leaving them. Now, pause there for a moment. The scriptures before this tells us that God, Jesus Christ, had just done a huge healing rally and everybody experienced the power of God healing deliverance. And because of the success of that ministry, everything was going right, right? People being healed, saved, delivered. Because of the success of that ministry, people wanted Jesus to stay put. Just like X church by the grace of God is successful and you're wondering why Pastor Kenneth has to go to X Kota Kamuni. We do that and continue to obey God's voice because we know it's not just about staying put and being comfortable. It's about focusing on what God is calling us to do. It's about His kingdom. It's about His plan. I'll tell you more about the plan in a while. But this is a successful rally, amazing a blessing, amazing results. You should stay here where success is, but not Jesus. Everybody wants him to stay, but this is what he said in the next verse. But he said to them who wanted him to stay and enjoy the fruits of success, I must preach the kingdom of God to the other cities also because for this purpose I have been sent. I told you the kingdom is about plan, purpose, power. The plan of what is his real plan for giving you life? What is his real plan for blessing your business? What is his real plan for blessing your family? What is his real plan for giving you what you have today? And, and, and for blessing uh, the church? In you know, Acts Church, must not forget where we came from. What's God's plan? And when we get God's plan, we get God's purpose. And then we move in power. And we see things move. Because we are, we, are, we, are, we are moving with God and we are in alignment with His plan. Somebody say, Amen. Now, let's look at John 3, 3. Everybody still okay? Jesus answered and said to him, you know, John 3 is a beautiful chapter, right? Because you know John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. But before that was a, wasn't it a Nicodemus who came and asked him about, you know, how does one get salvation? How does one get born again? Jesus answered to him, most assuredly, this is Jesus preaching. <laughs> preaching to one who doesn't know. Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one, one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. That means uh, a lot of us Christians, we stop at born again because that's the most important thing to us. We just want to get people to say the sinner's prayer. Hallelujah! The whole heavens rejoice. Yes. Amen. But there's a higher purpose for being born again. Because when you're born again, you see the kingdom of God. You see God's plan, purpose, power. Are you all still with me? That's why you can get people saved huh, and still don't know the plan. You can get people saved, saying the sinner's prayer, don't know their purpose and not living, come on, in power. Hallelujah. I'm excited. Because if you can catch this, I tell you what, everything else in you and around you will make sense. And, and you will be excited. You'll be excited. Praise the Lord. Okay. Now, let me just jump uh, to uh, a particular scripture I want to show you about the Jews um, in Acts 1.6. Okay, just, just a very quick one so that you get a sense that the Jews who are God's special people also knew about this concept of kingdom. They knew. And when Jesus was about to go into His glory, Acts chapter 1 is about how, you know, Acts 1, 8 is, and you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in all Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and up to ends of the earth. You know that scripture, right? Holy Spirit is coming, Jesus is going up. Jesus is going up, Holy Spirit is coming. So the last question, wow, this is a very important question. You know how important last questions are? Because, you know, when you're talking to somebody and then in your heart you're burning with a question, then the person is about to say goodbye to you and you don't feel very good. No, 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 no. Hold on, hold on. Just one more question, right? Just, just one more question. Very important question. Very important. You got to get it off your chest. So they finally got it off their chest. Got it off their chest. What is it so important? What is so important to the Jews? Restore the kingdom. The only thing is, they said restore the kingdom to Israel means they, 
got it, but they didn't get it. And many Christians, sadly, have got it, but don't get it. They think it's kingdom to a certain people, kingdom to Christians, kingdom to believers, kingdom so that we can now enjoy our Christendom. Are you all seeing me? So they didn't get it. They knew that God wants to restore the kingdom. Come on now. And maybe many Christians also know about kingdom. Maybe you have heard about kingdom before, but you're seated here today thinking that it's all about our comfort and our blessing. And so they didn't get it. And so Jesus didn't really answer that question. He says, times and seasons not for you to know. Right? <laughs> Whatever it is. And, but when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you shall receive power. And then you will be my witnesses. Witnesses of what? Witnesses to the Lord. But I believe if God had more time to explain that, He will say, you'll be my witness about my kingdom. So don't talk about, don't think, don't talk, don't think about Israel only. I'm going to show you that when the Holy Spirit comes and sends you out, it will no longer just be Jerusalem. Judea. Samaria. Uttermost parts of the earth. Because that's my plan. Can I tell you something? Maybe I suggest to you because it's not written in the Bible. Can I suggest a very um, cool concept about why Jesus came the time He came? How many of you have been asked a question before? Huh? Um, why did Jesus come that time? Why He didn't come earlier? Come earlier, ma. Come David's time. Daniel's time. Elijah's time. Malachi's time. <laughs> Why must only come that time? Okay, so I got a suggestion for you. You can take it if you want to. You don't have to if you are one of those theologians who need to be supported with everything with Scripture. And I also believe in that. But sometimes we support by history. Okay? Not just Scripture, but history. What is Jesus trying to do? What is the Father trying to achieve? No, we as speakers these days, uh, I'm not very good at this. You can see no slides today, except scripture only, because I'm very good at giving no slides. I, 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 you know, I, I used to joke, you know, because, because people, people are so good with their slides. I'm really a dinosaur when it comes to slides. Not to say I cannot learn, uh, I also give slides, one, but usually one word, one word, one word. I used to joke, uh, people got PowerPoint, but I can point you to the power. No, I, no. No, I, I want to, but today no slides, only the only scripture, because scripture is important. But if Jesus were to use slides, let me tell you what he used. He wanted the whole world to understand first the concept. And if you don't understand the concept, he won't come. If you don't understand the concept of kingdom, how it works, he won't come. He wanted the world to understand, this is my suggestion to you, that he came during the Roman Empire. the Roman Empire. If you understand history, Rome had conquered almost all of the earth. You go to Europe, you still see their influence everywhere. Okay? And some other parts of the world, they, they were like the United Kingdom of their time. Still with me? They conquered. Jesus came during that time. I'll tell you why in a minute all the other acts of conquering in the past. This is the way kings conquered land. They conquer and they bring the people to the original land. They take slaves. They take the rich. They even take the king and put him into the prison back in their own land. They probably leave the very poor because maybe he can't contribute to the community. And sometimes they burn down the land that they conquered. Sometimes they break down the buildings, even the temple, because that's the mindset of former conquerors. But not so the Romans. The Romans, when they conquered the land, they put their governor there. They don't change very much except the laws. See, in Jesus' time, uh, we see at least three characters. We see Pontius Pilate. Who was he? Governor. Didn't take uh, Israel back to Rome. How many Christians want to go back to heaven? 
Yes, that's a good question. Right? Because yes, we want to. But too many of us who should be living heaven on earth, we should be living heaven on earth, but we can't wait to just go back to heaven even though our time is not done. Too many Christians are like that. This is not God's plan. So He came at a time when a people knew what kingdom was. It is to enter a land and influence it, not to take it out. Not to go to some mountain and meditate and be called a guru. It's to go into your marketplace, go into your school, your colleges and let your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. There are two places. I'll tell you about God's plan in a moment. But now the understanding is wherever they conquered, send one governor, yes? Send soldiers. But who was there as a king? Herod. Still got Herod, didn't touch him. Work with him. How many of you want to go into a certain office just to wipe out everybody, make everybody Christian? There was a Herod and there were chief priests. Religion still going on. The chief priest was the one that put Jesus to death. Herod supported it. And then finally, the only man that can make the real decision was Pontius Pilate. Also, didn't have the guts to make it. Still with me. Because God's will was done that his son was supposed to be sacrificed on the cross. All still with me? So he comes with a backdrop. Jesus comes with a backdrop or a projection or a slight presentation of do you understand what your father's heart is? His plan was that on earth, his kingdom will be established and this will be the way it's done. I'm not into taking people out of their trouble. I'm into putting testimony into their trouble. Hello everyone. Thank you so much for watching. If you've been blessed by this video, please share this with a friend and bless them too. Do like this video and subscribe to this channel for more content like this. Wishing you all good health and God's grace and favour to be upon all of you. God bless you. See you next time.